pray. I welcome you again to 10 minutes with God today in Jesus' name. The Lord has spoken good concerning us, and as you come along with us, great and mighty things He's going to do even in your life in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Almighty Redeemer, we thank you for this moment. You have brought us into your presence again. As we come into your presence in this time, we pray. You will do a new thing in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. I welcome you again to 10 minutes with God today. If you are new on this channel, this is a channel where God has spoken good concerning us and where we share the word of God and pray and we receive deliverance and we receive divine action directly from God. Today, we want to look at a very important message from the word of God and in the next 10 minutes, we'll be rounding up. Let us sing this worship song before we go on. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I come to sing your praises. I'm so glad you reign in my life. I'm so glad you came to save me. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the skies. Lord, I lift your name on high. Father, we thank you because you are the mighty man in battle. We lift your name up on high because you came to save us, you came to deliver us. I pray this salvation. We shall not take it for granted in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, blessing Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Once again, I welcome you to the Word of God this morning. And today, I'm looking at the book of Luke chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 15 from verse 11. And the story here is a story of the parable of the lost son. But... Every time I look at the Word of God, it tells me different things from what we've been told from us from the school and from what we've been taught in the churches. Every time I look at it, the Lord gives me fresh insight. Sometimes it's similar, sometimes it's quite different from what I've been taught before. And I believe God that is going to give us divine illumination this morning in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 15 verse 11, it said, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one had said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. For now, I'm going to stop here. The man had two sons. And the two, one of the children came to him and said, Father, I've been staying with you for some time, but it's like uh, you are my brother. I don't want to stay with you again. I want to go and start my own kingdom. I want to go and establish my own kingdom. He said, Father, give me my own share of the estate, my own share of the property. Let me go and start afresh and let me go and become, do what I need to do to make it in my own life. And the father were told that, so he divided his property between them. In this place, the father did not even question the children. He didn't ask them, ah, why are you going? He didn't ask them any question. Well, he didn't ask the prodigal, the so-called, the man that is so-called prodigal. He didn't ask him any question. Immediately, the boy asked him at all his own portion of the inheritance the father gave him. And the father allowed him to go. This shows us a lesson that, ah, but this is the guy that is called prodigal. He came to the father and the father gave him his own share of the property to go and to go and uh, to go away and go and spend it to go and live his life. You see, when um, some passage of the scriptures, God allows it to give us to bring some lessons to us. Number one lesson we learn from here is that it is good to start your own thing when your father is still alive, or when your mother is still alive, or when your mentor or mentee are still around you. When people that can guide you are still around, when people that can give you resources are around, when people that you can look up to and stay around, it's good to start your own venture, whether it is your own spiritual venture, your own physical venture, your own any kind of venture that you want to start. It can be a business, it can be a church, it can be um, anything. It is good to start. Not that you just stay with your parents and your parents are giving you uh, money every time, giving money until when they go old and old and old, you are still there irresponsible. What this boy was trying to say is, Father, let me try my responsibility. Father, I've been staying with you, but let me also try my own responsibility. And this boy that is called prodigal, so-called, he is not prodigal. He does the way we look at it that he's a prodigal son. 
He's a child that tried his own best. He tried, though we we're told he went ahead and they spent the money anyhow. But we have not come to that point. We'll get to that point. I'm going to give us more insight in that direction. What I wanted to look at is that he came to the father and said, Father, give me my own share of inheritance. Let me use it. I had a particular story of a particular individual in Nigeria, in Lagos. The individual was irresponsible in the family, from a wealthy family. So the father called him and said, we've tried all our best and there was nothing that you, we could do with you. You've not been responsible. Now, before I die, I'm giving you this money. It's a huge chunk of money. Go and use it to start any venture you want to do because we tried to set you up here. You couldn't do it. We tried to set you up with this. You couldn't do it. This money I'm giving you now, go and use it to try any venture you want to try. And then if you don't succeed, that is your inheritance. If you succeed, that is your inheritance. With that mentality, the boy took it, he became serious, and he floated an insurance company. And today, that insurance company is one of the top five insurance companies in Nigeria, and is doing well. Now, assuming the father did not give him the, the chance to try, to try, and he told everything for me, ah, you are not yet uh, capable, they can't do it yet. Everything your child wants to do, everything your child wants to explore, you say, no, I don't explore it, I don't explore it. Let the child explore it and make mistakes while you are still around so that they can still come back to you and rally around instead of you to allow them to just remain where they are and not make mistakes so it is easy when you, you go away that they're going to make mistakes then who are they going to run back to that will be a father unto them so let the children explore let them make the mistake if they want to make mistakes while you are still there to guide them this man came to his father the father is a wise man Every shrewd businessman like this father of the prodigal son so-called is a wise man. He is not a foolish man. And in this place, we are looking at this man as God. God is the one, is the father of the children. The children are human beings around the world. And these children, they are free moral agents. They can do whatever they want to do. And this one came to God and said, God, this is what I want to do. God said, go ahead and do it. This one said, God, I want to remain here. He remain there. And this is what you see. So the father allowed him to go. Now, you that the father have given resources to allow to go, giving chances, giving privileges, use those privileges well. Don't waste your privileges with your house baby. Don't lose, live anyhow. Live a good life. Live a balanced life that will bring glory to God in heaven. And eventually the political son made a mess of his life. He came back to his father. You can see why I'm saying that the father allowed him to go, knowing fully well that he's still around, knowing fully well that even if he mess up, he will still come back and he has the privilege. You say he loses, he lost his sources, he lost his. When he came back, what did the father do? The father took him in and received him him. So the lesson we draw from here is that if your children come to you and they say they want to explore, allow them to explore in a good way, in a good way, guide them, direct them, teach them the word of God and let them go and explore. You cannot guide your children. You cannot, you cannot padlock your children. You, there's nothing you can do. All you can do is to teach them the way of the Lord, teach them the right thing and allow them to go and explore. And they're going to explore with show whether your teaching in their life is working or your teaching in their life is not working. My prayer is that we are going to be wise in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for the word again that has come for, to us. I pray the wisdom that we need to navigate this life, you give unto us in Jesus' name. I pray we will not be foolish, we will not spend our life anyhow. And I pray we will not be tied to the apron strings of our parents, of our leaders, or of leadership, or of anyone. But to help us to explore and to try and to make attempts in life in Jesus' name. We are told about Thomas Edison, he tried so many times, eventually, he what he discovered, we are still using it today. I pray, help us, Lord, that we also will try and make, and make attempts and not just stay in one place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. I pray as we go this day, I pray your Shekinah glory, your presence, your power will go with us in Jesus' name. Today, you connect us with people that matter in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, this is the word of God for us today. I want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want to share the link of this video with others. And I want you to keep coming back to hear and to receive the word of God. God has spoken good concerning us. And it is certain He is going to do us good. God bless you. I am going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.